I'm going to be participating in an experiment put on by BeerAndWineJournal.com with Chris Colby and James Spencer from Basic Brewing. The gist of the experiment is to see if the chloride to sulfate ratio in your brewing liquor influences the perception of the hop bitterness in your beer. Now what I have here is my gypsum which is calcium sulfate and my calcium chloride. The okay, hypothesis is that the more sulfate, the more perception of bitterness. Now we're going to need to start out with distilled water, and then we're going to need to add our chemical additions, which is going to be 4 grams of each, 1 to 1 ratio, for 10 gallons of distilled water. I can't measure the chemicals for each individual gallon, because we're talking about such a small weight. So I'm pouring all 10 gallons into the mash tun and adding the chemicals to the total water. Then I'm going to rebottle it for later. This is the gypsum, which is calcium sulfate. Four grams. And then this is the calcium chloride. Four grams of each chemical should give us 50 parts per million of calcium and a one to one ratio of chloride to sulfate. Now we just need to mix it up because basically most of it's just sitting on the bottom. I have one pound of Crystal 60 and I have 13 pounds of just regular American two row. And so that's 14 pounds total. I calculated it out to 1.25 quarts per pound of grain. So I have 14 pounds of grain and I'm going to put 17.5 quarts, which comes out to 4.375 and some other decimal points. So that's what I have in the pot right here. Got my sparge water up to a little over 180 degrees. I'm going to dump all of this into the mash tun and then we're going to mix the grains in separately. Surprisingly, the temperature of the mash tun has not cooled down the water almost at all. It's almost the same temperature. I was surprised at the number that I got whenever I tested the water temperature after I threw it into the, the water into the mash tun because usually the temperature of the water drops immensely. I put it in, I usually put it in at 170 and the temperature usually drops to about 1. 60 or so, so I lose almost 10 degrees of temperature. But I'm sure I'm going to lose a lot more temperature after I add in all this grain. Right now outside it's about, I'm going to say it's about 79 degrees maybe. Now I've got all the grain mixed in. I usually let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes uh, to get the temperatures to kind of settle out and to even out. I'm going to take a temperature reading now to see if we need to add any additions. The temperature seems to have evened out around 161, 162 degrees, which is too high for me. I want it down no higher than about 152, but it looks like we're going to have to add a little bit of cool water. So our ratio may go from about one and a quarter quarts per pound of grain to maybe one and a half quarts per pound of grain. So I have one quart of 77 degree water, not cold, but cool. Stir this up a little bit, let it sit for a minute. Now that only brought our temperature down to about 159, so I'm going to add in another quart of 77 degree water. Alright, I did not want to add any more water to this. I didn't want to thin out the mash any more than it already was. Um, so what I decided to do was I just stirred it vigorously, let it sit. Um, so it's been sitting for about 10 minutes now. Let's go ahead and check the temperature one more time. All right, so as you saw, we're down to about 150.9, which we'll call that 151, which is fine. That's kind of the range I wanted to be in. So now we're going to let this sit. Chances are, the way I brew, it's probably going to sit in this mash tun for two or three hours. Hopefully, we'll get it out of here in about an hour, hour and a half. So here we go. Well, as I predicted, it is now 11.14 p.m. Oh, 11.15 p.m. 
and I began the mash at 4.30 p.m. in the afternoon. So this has been sitting here for seven hours now. Seven hour mash. It better be converted by now. I need to get my sparge water ready and using the handy sparge pal, I calculated out that we needed, that I had about 4.9 gallons in here and I need, according to this, 3.8 gallons. Let's get our hose put on to our container here. All right, the sparge water got up to 175, which may be just a tad bit high, but what can you do? I'm going to stir this a little bit, kind of loosen up all those sugars, and then I'm going to let it sit probably 10 or so minutes and let it just kind of settle down. All right, now we just need to use this to vorl off and create a grain bed. We're going to turn this just a little bit. Probably see how chunky that is. Uh, and pour that back in around the edges so it doesn't stir it up. And we'll start again. Now we're going to want to vorl off as many times as it takes to get this thing pretty clear. All right, it only took three. First one was just chunky. The second one was fairly clear in itself. And then the third one, it just looks like cloudy beer now. So I'll go ahead and just dump that in. And I already have it running here, so I'm just going to let this go. I'm going to change something up just a little bit here, something I've never done before. I believe it's called first wort hopping. I'm going to put one ounce of magnum into the pot while it's actually sparging off here. So here goes. Sparging is done. I got my stick marked for this particular pot. Let's see how much we got in here. Seven and a quarter gallons. Whew. That's why I go to the gym. Now I have my heat stick and I have the propane going so I can get it up to boiling a whole lot faster. So I recommend everybody get one of these. I made this one from plans that I found in BYO Magazine. You can see it's just about to start to do a rolling boil. And there's our rolling boil. Okay, I'm gonna turn the heat stick off real quick. And I'm gonna go turn the gas off. Let that settle down for a second and then I'll turn it back on. Now I may need to do that one more time, maybe two more times. It looks like we're about to get another attempt at a boil over. Okay, I'm gonna stir this down and then that probably should be the last time because it settled down really quick. I'm gonna do my first magnum hop addition. I'm gonna do a half ounce at 55 minutes. Now, just like with all brew sessions, you can't brew a beer without drinking a beer. And I'm brewing a nice, strong IPA, so I'm going to drink a nice, strong IPA. This is Terrapins Hopsecutioner from Athens, Georgia. And cheers. All right, this is my 45 minute edition of a half ounce of Magnum Hops. Now I'm onto my 35 minute hop edition. This is another half ounce of Magnum. This is our 25 minute Magnum half ounce hop edition. So far for this batch of beer, I've added three total ounces of hops. One ounce of Magnum in the, we'll call it the first wort hopping, and then I've done two ounces, two ounces total in the boil, one every basically 10 minutes, one at 55, one at 45, one at 35, one at 25. So our next addition is going to be the Cascade Hops. I have two additions, one at five minutes and one at zero minutes. I'm getting down to my final additions. This is my one ounce of Cascades at five minutes. Okay. 
And that's it. We're done. One hour boil. I am going to throw in my final one ounce of Cascade Hop Edition. And then I'm going to connect my wart chiller up and we're going to cool this puppy down. It is now 3.15 a.m. on Saturday, October 5th. I have this cooled down to 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, that's higher than I normally want to, to have it cooled down, but it's been cooling for about an, I'm gonna say an hour and 15 minutes. I forgot to time it. I've star sand my glass cardboard. You can see the foam that's in it. You can see the foam that's in my auto siphon here. And as they always say, their slogan is, don't fear the foam, so. I'm not gonna fear the foam. And I'm gonna siphon this right out of my brew pot here. I always seem to make a mess when I pour it, no matter if I use a, a funnel or not, so. We have just a tad over five gallons. I took a gravity reading and we'll check that in just a minute. But now we need to aerate and pitch our yeast. This is Y Yeast uh, American Ale 1056. And I'm gonna put the entire thing in here because I want this fermented out completely. And I'm done. I have written on the tank here exactly what I did. Brew day, October 5th, uh, 4.30 a.m. And I'm going to dry hop it, two ounces of Cascades. Today's the, uh, October 17th, and it is 3.30 in the afternoon. And I have two ounces of Cascade hops. And I'm going to put this back on. 